We've got it to Burkina Faso now, where an Al-Qaeda-linked armed group has taken responsibility for an attack that's killed nearly 200 people there. Now, this happened in the town of Barcelogo on Saturday as soldiers and civilians dug trenches designed to protect security outposts. At least 140 people are also injured. The attackers stole weapons and a military ambulance. Uh, during their assault. Let's bring in Nicholas Hack now. He is live for us in Dakar. First of all, can you explain the events which led to the, the deaths of nearly 200 people and more than 100 injured? What happened here? Well, Miriam, we've just heard from eyewitnesses or survivors of what happened on Saturday in Burkina Faso in the town of Barcelogo, which is roughly 100 kilometers from the capital, Ouagadougou. And the eyewitnesses say that on Friday they were asked by the Burkina Faso's military on the ground to start digging trenches. Now, many of the civilians did not want to do so. They were afraid of uh, revenge attacks from armed groups linked to al-Qaeda, but also ISIL uh, that are active in the area. So some of them were forced at gunpoint to dig trenches along this road. And I visited this area. There's a large road uh, that, co that connects the north to, of the country to the capital, Ouagadougou. So hundreds, if not thousands of villagers were forced to dig those trenches on Saturday when men in, uh, on, on motorcycles started shooting at them. And from the video published by the Al-Qaeda affiliate, Jamaat Nusrat al-Islam wal Muslimin, there were bodies scattered in those trenches as if they had just dug their own mass graves. Hundreds of bodies of women, children, and men with sandals scattered around the places as they were trying to run away from the, uh, the attack. Now, the Burkina Faso forces have not talked about it, have not communicated about this attack. But according to the local hospitals, they've activated their emergency plan. Uh, nurses, doctors have been recalled to try to treat those that have uh, been injured. But there are many more unaccounted for. And we expect in the hours to come that the death toll will continue to rise. Miriam? Nick, how is the army's fight against armed groups going there? Well, it depends who you talk to. According to the junta, it's going pretty well. They've been able to uh, stem off some attacks. But the reality is, Miriam, is that they have lost control of half of the country to armed groups linked to al-Qaeda and ISIL. And there are more than two million people, two million people that are on the move fleeing the ongoing attacks and the month of August, which hasn't ended, has been one of the deadliest so far. And this is happening at a time where there's great uncertainty among the military ranks of the capacity of the military junta to stem out those attacks themselves. There's been rumors of coups and counter coups against the junta. And analysts say that the military junta too preoccupied to maintain their uh, power rather than to stem off these attacks from armed groups. Meanwhile, the humanitarian, humanitarian situation is getting worse, Mirian. According to the Norwegian Refugee Council, the conflict in Burkina Faso is one of the most, the most neglected conflict in the world. They say that there is a lack of funding, there's a lack of interest or of, of a diplomatic solution to this ongoing situation. Thank Miriam? you so much. With all the latest from Dakar there, Nicholas Hack. Well, Victor Doke is a, a professor of international studies at the Kofi Annan International Peacekeeping Training Center. He joins us now from Accra in Ghana. This is a really gruesome attack which took place in the town of Barcelago. Uh, nearly 200 people have been killed, but that number is expected to rise. How serious are the security and humanitarian challenges in Burkina Faso right now? Well, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, it is very unfortunate um, that incident, incident has claimed a lot of lives. But um, the seriousness of the security and humanitarian issues in Burkina Faso is dire. Why do I say so? Now, we were all privy to the information when um, 
First of all, Burkina Faso was suspended because the junta took over. And then subsequently, we heard that they are opting out of the sub-regional body ECOWAS. Now, in line with that, they had their own intentions, or they came up with regards to forming and the uh, uh, joining the Alliance for the Sahel together with Mali and Niger. Now, this only points to the fact that now, once you opt out or you willingly declare your position with regards to coming out with a collective body that can assist you with regards to fighting terrorism and violent extremism, technically, right now, Burkina Faso, you are on your own. That is what it meant. Now, whether the Alliance for the Sahel has that capacity to even contribute troops or equipments to whatever to fight these armed groups is another issue. There's another question. What is going to happen now? They're going to have more challenges with regards to fighting their armed groups. But has you something? Can I can I ask you? Can I ask more. you? As you say, that the, the government the government is pursuing a, an aggressive military campaign against groups like ISIL and Al Qaeda. But those groups, those fighters, I mean, given what happened in the town of Barcelago on Saturday, civilians digging trenches, they ended up uh, killed inside those trenches. Are, are are those fighters becoming more violent? Are they increasingly turning on civilians now? Very much so. Now, when you have fighters who have been in existence, okay, for how long, nobody knows. Now, one other issue is these fighters have been given that mandate. Why do I say so? The junta has enabled by their actions, concentrating on political power than fighting these armed groups. Now, they've emboldened these armed groups to now willingly and then confidently come into town and take on civilians. Now, Anybody who's not seen to be supporting them will be taken or will be killed. That is what is happening now. The junta is having challenges, okay? Now, even before they became a junta, we all know the challenges that they faced. And now, becoming a junta, there is no kind of capacity, there is no kind of equipment. Where is the manpower? Where is the collective... So, from, from what you're saying, there's absolutely... There's no, there's no dialogue efforts uh, with these fighters. There is just a, a total war now against these groups. Uh, it, it's, they are now in control of 50% of the country. What does that mean for the people? Because it seems as though aid agencies can't access civilians who are in need. Right. So what it means is, one, they will control this 50% of the land. Thereby, local government cannot access the area. Okay? The people that will be will become or will be under their authority. And whoever will not cede or will not come under the authority will be killed. That is what it's going to mean. The junta is going to have a problem, a challenge, even wanting to take back that territory. So what currently is going on is these armed groups are in total control of that part of the country, which is not good for the entire junta themselves. Because once they control that land, they may want to control even more and advance by attacking, by using violent means to achieve that goal. Humanitarian-wise, you would have loss of lives. Now, how did these people even come out of that area is another challenge. Now, there'll be an opportunity for these angles to even recruit more men onto their sites. Whoever will not want to come onto their site will be taken out. So humanitarian-wise, Burkina Faso is going to face a challenge. A and international groups that would want to even offer assistance may find it very challenging because the army itself is not capable of reaching these areas. How much more even when the international community comes in? So we wait to see what is going to happen. But the question is, what will the junta itself, if itself do? Will it turn to Russia? like many other African states. Mm. These are questions we are waiting to be answered. Well, thank you for shedding some light on uh, what has to be one of the world's most, uh, one of the world's most neglected crises right now. Thank you very much, Professor Victor Doke. Thank you. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.